What's up y'all, it's Phil, and it's time for another quick tip. So you just finished building your own custom built-in or cabinets or something like an entertainment center, and it's going to go in a room that has carpet. The one thing you didn't think about when your wife was on Pinterest deciding what she wanted was how you were going to install it. Now obviously we know for the cabinet you simply find the stud, zip zip in the wall, it's secure, but what about the floor? Suddenly this big large entertainment center that took you two months to build and is your new pride and joy is going to be sitting on top of your old carpet. You don't plan on tearing this thing out anytime soon or maybe ever, but you don't know what to do about the carpet if you ever have to have it replaced. So today I am going to show you what I have found is the quickest and easiest way to remove the carpet and reinstall it correctly without being a professional. Now this technique is not totally necessary with hardwoods and here's why. When you're building your pieces, you don't want to set that footer directly on the carpet and the carpet pad because a couple of things are gonna happen over time. That carpet pad is going to degrade and wear out either where everyone is walking or just by the weight of the piece itself. Also that carpet may need to be replaced and the worst thing ever, and trust me, I've seen it hundreds of times, is when you build the footers directly onto the carpet and then the next person coming through simply has to cut around the carpet, install the tack strips in the wrong place because they can't get under your piece, and now you don't have the best installed carpet. Now luckily, carpet professionals have dealt with this before, and while it's frustrating and annoying to them, a lot of times they can still do it and give you a very professional finish. Us DIYers, on the other hand, have a much harder time with that. The hardwoods can very simply be cut across the front, new hardwoods installed, and then a piece of trim wrapped around it, no harm, no foul. It's really no different than butting up against a wall or another previously installed piece. That's why when you see me doing it on tile and hardwoods and laminate flooring, I will typically just build it right over what is existing there. With carpets, it's a little bit different because you want to have the carpet cut around your piece, but you also need to leave a little bit of extra room for your tack strips and for the carpets to actually go into or under the piece. And I'll show you how we're gonna do that in just a second. So the main thing with the carpet installation is that you want to cut the carpet to exactly the width of your inner footer without trim. You then wanna cut the carpet pad about an inch farther than that and move your tack strips or replace your tack strips so that they're right up against the carpet pad but give you roughly a quarter of an inch or so in front of them to where your inner support is or your inner footer is. That way when we go to replace the carpet, it comes over the pad onto those tack strips and then has a little bit of room to push in and provide a little bit of backward tension against the tack strips. Those little nails are gonna hold it in place so it doesn't pull out from under your piece. And finally, we're gonna go through with a piece of outer trim and that's gonna cover everything up, make it look really nice. It's pretty much the same way that it's done on the walls in the room. So when you're pulling everything out, take a look at that and see how it looks. And that's pretty much what we're gonna copy on the front of our piece. Now that you know what we're doing and why we're doing it, let's talk about how to do it. So depending on how you built your project, your footers are either attached or separate, like mine usually are, and you've probably already figured out all of your dimensions. Now I usually leave a two inch relief from the front of the face frame underneath to the front of the floor trim that I'll be installing. I also do that on the sides as well, unless the cabinets are all touching each other, but for the sake of this project, I'm gonna be doing a single cabinet. So I'll be making the footers on site, which advantage me, I get to then make them check them, fit them, and install everything that way. If you're doing it at home and you already have the footers installed, as long as you have accounted for your trim going behind or you've removed the trim and it's gonna sit flush against the wall, you can basically just set your piece in place and mark around it. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to go ahead and make my footer ahead of time. I'm going to put it in place, put the cabinet box on top of it, test fit everything, make sure it's exactly what I wanna do because messing up at this point it's gonna be way more expensive to try to replace the carpet. So once the footers are built and in place, everything is test fit, I can actually go through and just mark it. Now, you can mark it with a permanent marker. I like to use something that's gonna just really be vibrant and that I know is going to get on the carpet fiber so that I don't have to go back and remeasure and put everything back. At this point, I can take away the cabinet boxes, I can take away the footer, and I have got everything marked. This is the best and easiest way, in my opinion, 
to get your markings. You could go through and measure everything exactly and make sure that it's exactly what you want it to be. That can occasionally give you a slightly better fit, but it can also more often than not cause you to mess up something, to get a measurement wrong or whatever, and that's much more of a pain in the butt, especially once you start cutting into that carpet. Now you're gonna take a razor blade or a carpet uh, razor, I'm not sure what it's called, but it's specifically made for carpets, and you want to very carefully and slowly cut all the way down across your line. You need to keep this as straight as possible. And one of the things that I prefer to do is to put a 48 inch level down on the line and run my razor blade against that. So that if for any reason it starts to twist or move in the carpet fibers, that's gonna keep it as straight as possible as opposed to letting it veer off course and you gouge out the carpet, especially if you go the wrong direction. Once you've got all of this cut out, you want to pull the carpet off of any tack strips. If you're up against a wall or a corner like I am, get it off these tack strips, get it pulled out. Now we need to remove the carpet pad, but we actually need to make this section about an inch bigger than what we just cut. There's two ways to do this. One is to measure your opening. And once you've got that opening measured, go ahead and pull the carpet back a little bit so that you've got some workspace and then re-measure onto the carpet pad but adding an inch to all of your measurements. That's probably the most precise way. The way that I like to do it, however, is taking a template that I've made that is one inch wide, or even just using that 48 inch level if it happens to be an inch wide as well, and simply going next to the score line that you already most likely made when you cut the carpet initially. The razor blade probably left a cut line in that foam in the carpet pad, and you can simply use that as a reference point to make your next mark. Now with the carpet out of the way, using your straight edge again, you can go ahead and make those cuts all the way down through the foam. Now that that's done, pull the whole thing out and you have to go back through and remove any staples that are left and any like little bits of pad that are left on the subfloor. So usually just popping those up with a straight edge of some kind like a, a, a pallet knife or a screwdriver or even just getting in there with a wrench and pulling it up. Most installers only do it around the outside border, but some do it occasionally outside the border and like every 12 inches or so. So just keep in mind where those staples are. If your piece is hollow on the bottom like mine, you may not even need to remove these, but we just wanna make sure we have the best clearance possible. Now your carpet is out, your foam is cut, and all you need to do is move those tack strips. So look at the edge of where your piece is going to be and as close as possible within about an eighth of an inch shy of where your piece is gonna be connecting. Go ahead and use either a putty knife or a small blade or something. Tap right through that, get it cut, get it broken off, and then go through and start removing each of these tack strips. Easiest way to do this is to get a pry bar or some sort of other thing like that just underneath the large nails that are every couple of inches. Pry one up a little bit, loosen the next one, loosen the next one, and then go back and keep hitting each one over and over again until you get the whole tack strip to come up, hopefully without snapping it. If you do snap it, that's okay. You can buy replacement tack strips in the carpet section at the big box stores. I always keep a couple in my trailer just in case, in case there's water damage or pet urine or something like that on the tack strips and I wanna just fully get rid of it and get a new one in there, I've got those. Speaking of new ones or just moving the old ones, if you did a good precise cut on one end, you can usually just pull the tack strip straight back to where you're going to be installing it. If not, you can get another one and cut it to size. Now take that tack strip and making sure that the little nails are facing away from the carpet pad. You wanna just barely touch it up against the carpet pad and hammer the big nails down into the subfloor. You can go ahead and lay your carpet back down if you want to at this point, but don't attach it to the tack strips yet because we're gonna end up pulling it right back up most likely when we're installing the cabinet boxes. Now you're ready to actually put your cabinet in. So go ahead and drop that footer in place. If it's a floating footer like mine, or if it is attached to the piece, go ahead and start installing the piece and double check all of your measurements. Ideally, you should have roughly a quarter of an inch from the front of your tack strip to the front edge of your footer. And remember, this is a sub footer. This is like a backing that we're going to be attaching the trim to. So it doesn't have to be a perfect fit, but you want it as close as possible. Once the footer is in, go ahead and start reinstalling the carpet. If this is a DIY job, you can go ahead and rent one of the carpet kickers, which you 
put on, kick it with the back of your knee, and it puts the carpet back in place on the tack strip by adding tension. I usually get a putty knife or scraper and push the tip down so that it goes over that tack strip and down into the quarter inch void. It kind of bunches the carpet back a little bit and that helps provide extra hold on those tack strips. This is where it's good news if you didn't get a precise and perfect cut on your carpet initially because those little waves and stuff that aren't a perfect seal up against the side, those are gonna be hidden by some trim. Now, in my case, the trim is going directly on the front of the piece. So I'm actually just building it right onto it with a single miter on the corner and I'm done. Yours may be a little more complicated and if it's underneath and you have like a two inch toe kick relief like I usually do, you just have to get down in there and get everything precise, but it's really not much harder. Now you don't want the trim pushing down against the carpet, but you don't want it raised up above the carpet. So if you need to do any rips or get anything specially cut, do it at this point before installation. But ideally, you'll want your trim to fit just underneath your piece or just onto the face of your piece and just be touching those carpet fibers so that when you look at it, it looks no different than the wall and the baseboards all the way around the room. I like to pre-paint a lot of these pieces or at least pre-prime them. But at this point, you can go ahead and take some tape lay it down, but make it so that it is just touching the bottom of your baseboard and then go through the putty knife and shove it underneath. This will help protect those carpet fibers when we go back and do our priming and painting later if it's not already been done. If it was painted ahead of time, all you have to do is go through and do some touch up for where you shot your brad nails in. But either way, it's just a good idea to protect your carpets. Now that the trim is in, go ahead and double check that carpet, pull on it, move it around, make sure that everything is tight, make sure that it is in on those tack strips. If you need to, you can use the kicker to push a little tension on it, push your putty knife in there and just really shove that little piece down underneath that trim, pull everything back, double check it, make sure it's got a good fit. And that's it, you are done and your piece looks awesome. The best part is it is now professionally or at least pseudo professionally installed. I am not a carpet guy, I'm not a professional installer, but I do do this as most of my pieces end up going on carpet. My clients agree to this ahead of time and they know that this is part of it, but they still expect me not to make a $3,000 mistake and cut the wrong size. They also expect their carpet to lay exactly as flat as it did before and to be secured into the space under the piece the way it's supposed to be. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this gives you the advantage of if that carpet ever needs to be pulled and replaced, the carpet installers can pull it and replace it just like they would around the rest of the room because your tack strips and the way it is installed is almost exactly like it is around the rest of the baseboards. This way there's not old nasty carpet just rotting underneath your piece and allowing your piece to sag over the years because it's losing a little bit of inches. And once again, with hardwoods and tile, it can always be flush cut right at the front of your piece. And most hardwood and tile has quarter round or shoe molding across the front of it anyway. So that's gonna cover that little bit of gap. So this is really only for carpet. So thanks for watching y'all. I hope this helped. I hope somebody learned something from it. I know this is an extremely intimidating process. Believe me, it used to scare the living crap out of me. And most days it still does. This can be a very expensive mistake. And if it's not done in your own home, you gotta fix it. But if you do it right and you do it the way that I've explained in this video, it's extremely easy for even the most novice beginner to do. Just take your measurements, make your marks, double and triple check everything, be careful when cutting, do it step by step as you're supposed to do, take your time, breathe, you'll do it right, I promise. I don't think I'm able to promise or guarantee anything on YouTube, but I'll bet you can do it. I do it all the time and I'm an idiot. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. I am happy to answer them. Find me on Instagram. I am at PMK Woodworking. Let me know if this video helped you out. Feel free to ask me any questions and anything on there and show me your projects too. I wanna to see what you guys are doing out there. If you wanna support this channel, check out some of the links for merch and for plans and for other things that will be coming up here in just a second. Engage with those ads as annoying as they are because right now that is the only thing supporting this channel. But with that being said, y'all, thanks again for watching. Get out there, get on your projects, make your dreams come true, and don't be scared of your carpets. It's better to do it right than to just be lazy about it. Good luck, y'all. We'll see you next time.